everybody, welcome to the Anna Dress Sew Along. Today I am shooting video and I'm uploading it to my YouTube because I'm tired of fighting with my little tripod and my iPhone to make a nice, easy to follow Facebook Live. So until I figure that out, I'm gonna do it this way. Today what I'd like to do is show you how to stabilize edges on your knit fabric if you feel like they're gonna stretch out. And I wanna show you how to sew a dart using um, your serger. So those are the two things I want to show you today. In front of me I have an Anna dress cut out. My daughter picked out this fabric, my daughter Anna actually, so I'm making her a couple of these dresses and she's so excited that there's a sleeve because her, the original one I made her was sleeveless which was great for the summer but um, it was on her wish list actually to have a sleeve so this is like happy happy. You can see here in front of me I have some some knit stay tape and it's really really fine you can see you know you can see through it it's very lightweight and it's perfect for stabilizing edges on your Anna dress where you think it may stretch and what I want to do is just show you some of these places okay so on the front here's the V neckline if you're new to stretching your knit strip around to get it to hug against you. You can also use the stay tape to stabilize the V neckline so it doesn't stretch out. And the way you apply this is you turn it to the wrong side. You're just gonna lay it flat and you wanna make sure when you lay it flat you're not stretching the knit out because if you apply a stay tape to something that's stretched then obviously it's going to be stretched when you you know, with the stay tape and it's gonna stay stretched. So I like to really just take a minute and make sure that my knit is laying nice and flat, not stretched out. I'm just gonna take a piece and I'm gonna fuse it to the wrong side of the, um, the edge. And you can see one side, you can see little glittery dots and the other side you can't. So you wanna put the glittery dots against the fabric and I'm just going to do this. It will also help stabilize the base of the V. Okay, so in the instructions I show how to use some wash away stabilizer to stabilize this area. You can also do it this way. I'm just going to gently press down and fuse it. It doesn't take a lot. Now this knit stay tape is from Sew Keys and I love it because it's so lightweight. So I will put a link to where you can get this stuff um, under the video. I'm just gonna cut that to match. Now see how nice this is? Now you've got this nice knit edge. It still stretches, but it doesn't you know, stretch out of shape. So that's really kind of cool. So you can do it on the neckline. Another place you wanna do it um, is the armhole. Now you don't need to stabilize the whole armhole. The portions of the armhole that tend to get out of shape are in here. So where it's curving around your arm to your underarm, where your bust is located right in this curve, that's another good spot to, to put some stabilizer. Now if you feel like you wanna do your whole armhole, you're not gonna hurt it, but I just wanna show you how to do a curve. I'm just gonna cut a piece I think I need, and then I'm gonna put it with the glue side face down. And to get this to curve, what you're just gonna do is you're just gonna make some snips, you know, where the curve is. I'm just snipping, just a few, maybe three. And that's gonna allow me to just shape this to the armhole without stretching the fabric. Remember, we're not changing the shape of the fabric, we're just adding some stability to it. So this is gonna allow that. See how nice that is? And now I can just fuse that in place. Oops. You might wanna test your fabric to make sure it's not gonna melt um, to use an iron. You may wanna use a press cloth in between your you know, your fabric and your stay tape and the iron. You may want to do that. All right, so that's another place. So on the front, those are the places I would do that. Um, on the back, I would do the shoulder seams. I would just put a piece of stay tape 
right on the shoulders and that will keep the sleeve on your shoulder so when you add the sleeve it'll just keep a nice shape to your shoulder and this is pretty common I would do this to any garment even if you don't feel like you need those other places okay. see the stay tape is really nice and easy to work with I'm just going to do my other shoulder what I want to show you now is how to mark and sew a dart on a serger because if you practice a little bit this can be a very cool way to do it now I'm just going to mark my dart And actually the dart is cut out on this one so it makes it easy to mark. So there's my middle. Okay, and here's my point for here. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to mark the stitching lines on the dart. Like that. And like this. I'm also going to mark the middle of the dart because that makes it easier to fold the dart in half. Okay, so there's my dart marked. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half in a way where I would put it in the, into the serger. So I'm going to just fold it in half like this so I can see that the fold is on my center guideline like that. You want to make sure your ends are matching. So if you pin on the line, actually, let me just show you this. So if I pin on the line, I can flip it over and see that I'm pinning on the line on the opposite side, too. And if it's not exactly on, you can, you know, just give it a little bit of an adjustment. Now, the cool thing with a knit is if you're slightly off the line, it's not going to really affect it like it would something not stretchy. But see, that's how I can tell if I have it here and then I have it there, I know it's going to be right on the line. All right, so let me just get this all situated. If your dart is not laying flat like this, then it's going to be funky when you sew it. So just take your time and make sure you've got it pinned um, neatly so it's flat. And then what we're going to do is I am going to measure a quarter of an inch away, or actually in my case, I'm gonna measure three eighths of an inch in from my stitching line because that's what my seam allowance is on my serger. So I've just got my three eighths. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off this extra fabric like that. All right, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me an edge to follow on the serger. So let's go to the serger and I'll show you how to do this now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my fabric, I'm going to put it under the presser foot so that it's um, right under the, starting under the needles. And I'm going to lift this up so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get it right there. And I don't want to cut anything off. I just want to stitch along my stitching line that I drew. And I can see from the guide on the baby lock I'm using that the second line in the front of the presser foot here, that's what I want to line up my um, stitching line with because that's where the right needle is going to be. I'm, I have myself set up for a four thread stretch stitch. Um, it's stitch selection A on my stitch selector. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start stitching. And as I get to the tip of the dart, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to veer off the edge of the fabric. Watch what happens as I get over here. All right, so you can see that I just stitched right off the edge of my dart. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I need to make a neat finish here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these to about an inch tails, and then I'm just going to use a needle to tease them apart. Now, if you want to take out a stitch that you've surged, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the needle threads and they come right out. 
We don't want to pull the needle threads in this case. We want to pull the looper threads. So I'm just going to make sure they're just untangled and everything is nice and separated at the very beginning of the seam. And then what I'm going to do after I get them nice and separated is I'm going to pull them and it's going to bring those loops down to where I veered off the edge of the fabric. So see what happens is, I'm just going to do one at a time. So see how, see how nice it just pulls it down? And then you don't have the loops hanging off the edge of your dart, off the edge of the fabric. I'm just going to give this one a little bit of a pull. And so see how nice that looks? So what it does is it snugs the um, looper threads right against the fabric. All right, so you can see that that makes a pretty nice looking dart on the serger. All right, so to finish the edges of the dart, you could go in there and dot it with some fray check. You can also tie loose knots out of the longer looper threads. Um, if you're gonna use fray check though, please check to make sure it doesn't show on your fabric. Um, then, you know, you wanna give this little press. I like to press my seam allowance up if you're working with a cup size that's um, D or above, press it up. If you're working with a cup size A to D, press it down. I'm sorry, A to C, press it down. Um, I recommend practicing this technique on some scraps, maybe draw some triangle shapes. They don't need to be actual darts. You know, you can trim it to a quarter like I showed you and then just practice surging off the edge of your fabric and pulling the looper thread, not the um, needle thread. All right, so if you have any questions, you can post them below. Um, I know some of you have Anna dresses um, lined up for when you have time. Please, there's no pressure. I just wanted to, you know, spend some time showing you guys some stuff um, with this pattern so when you do have time, you can come back and review these videos. Um, I hope you guys are having a great holiday season. Next week, I will show you some finishing things for the Anna dress. So I'll see you next week, and I hope you guys are having a great day.